Sure you can 202 requested that I do Pachycephalosaurus, and we just happen to have Pachycephalosaurus. There isn't as much in the way of fossil evidence for this particular creature as maybe we would like. It's a very popular dinosaur, but for most of its history, we really haven't had anything besides skull fragments, and it, it was something like 70 odd years after the first skull fragment was described that we finally found a whole skull of this guy. But a lot of the recent developments are really interesting, and we will get to those. <laughs> there was a gentleman in the 19th century by the name of Joseph Lady, who you should totally read about because he was a man of science back when that was a lifestyle rather than an occupation. It seems like Marsh and Cope get all of the press as far as 19th century American paleontologists go, but if it hadn't been for ladies' work, they wouldn't have had a job. I mention him because even though we didn't find it out until almost a hundred years after the fact, he described the very first specimen of Pachycephalosaurus, which was just a skull fragment, and, and he thought that it was from some kind of armadillo-looking creature because uh, he just didn't have anything else to go on. Sixty years later, there was a gentleman by the name of Charles Gilmore who had slightly more material to work with, and he realized that this was a dinosaur. And based on the teeth, he actually classified it as a troodon, which at the time was thought to be basically the same as another dinosaur called Stegoceras, which we have a lot of specimens of. We have, we have dozens of specimens from, from Canada, described by Lawrence Lamb, and most of what we've been able to infer about Pachycephalosaurus comes from Stegoceras. Not to be confused with Stegosaurus, I realize that gets confusing. This was found in the Hell Creek Formation in Wyoming, which tells us that it was late Cretaceous, 70 million years ago to, well, 65 million years ago, the KPG extinction. It was 12 years after Gilmore was working that Barnum Brown, who you will remember from the Tyrannosaurus episode, was working with another man named uh, Schlake, Schlake here. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but that name had a complete skull, finally, and they named it uh, something other than Troodon. Uh, they called it Pachycephalosaurus, referring to the, the thickened skull roof. Pachycephalosaurids are interesting in that they seem to have suddenly emerged, fully formed, from who knows where. The current idea is that they're actually more closely related to the Ceratopsians than they are to the Ornithopods, which they resemble. The group is called Marginocephalia, which refers to their uh, head adornments. Since the head is nominally the most important feature of this animal, let's start with the head. It's entirely too small. Pachycephalosaurus, when fully grown, this is clearly an adult, and I'll get to why later. Pachycephalosaurus fully grown was about 15 feet long, we estimate, but that head would be the size of your torso. Disproportionately large head. As usual, they have portrayed this bipedal creature as tripodal. So first change, other than the head, is to lean the animal forward. Usually I would rail on them for having the head perpendicular to the neck, but for Pachycephalosaurus that's actually really accurate. The neck did connect at the bottom of the skull. The usual explanation for this involves agonistic behavior, which is to say combat. They think that it was oriented so that it could absorb impact. And we'll get to that later. But since we've tilted the animal forward, the neck should really be a J as opposed to the more traditional S that you see in most dinosaurs. The tail is rather too short. It should be about the length of the rest of the creature. So half of the overall length is tail. And it's far too bendy. Pachycephalosaurs seem to have had reinforcing bony rods, the same kind you see in, well, ornithopods, but a lot of other dinosaurs as well, that keep the tail past the first few vertebrae 
rather stiff for, for balance purposes. Now this implies that it was a runner. So I should mention that the legs are a little too heavy set. They at least have the right number of toes and they've portrayed the dew claw in about the right uh, position. The legs are proportional to the body, they're just too much meat on the, the forelimb and not enough on the thighs. Similarly, the hands are pretty good, or the, the forelimbs, the arms and the hands are pretty good proportionally. It had rather tiny forelimbs. We're not sure whether it could have walked on them. It seems like it wouldn't have needed to. And the position of them isn't bad. The reconstructions I've seen tend to portray it the same way you see Satakasaurus in that, where instead of being pronated straight down, they're sort of stuck in this 45 degree angle. And it has the right number of fingers. Another note on the neck, it's probably too thick proportional to the head. When we increased the size of the head, there's a, a shelf, it, it juts out behind where the neck contacts the skull, which is really quite strange until you remember that we're figuring it's related to the Ceratopsians. In profile view, the head is not bad. The dome in the front has a little too steep of a slope on it. It should proceed over the eyes a little bit. The arrangement of the spikes isn't bad, but there's far too many of them in back and not enough in front. There, there were really large spikes in the, the very back of the head and, and the spikes on the nose were also more prominent than they're portrayed here. It doesn't seem to have a beak. It looks like they've just given it lips. Ornithischia is occasionally called predentata because they possess the predental bone, which is the bottom component of the beak. So not including the beak on an Ornithischian is rather misleading. <laughs> It's got its mouth closed, so I can't comment on teeth, except that they have given it cheeks, and that is accurate because uh, its teeth were shaped in such a way, and it had many, many tiny teeth, uh, that it seems to have been able to process food, the, the, not as efficiently as, say, a hadrosaur could, but definitely in line with how herbivores were living at the end of the Cretaceous. You sometimes see the teeth that were at the back of the premaxillary bone poking out when it has its mouth closed, but I've also seen it reconstructed without them, so I'm not going to call them on that. That is kind of interesting, though, that it had teeth at the front of its mouth in addition to the beak. In dorsal view, however, the head is far too wide, especially at the mouth. It, it, it really narrowed in the front of the snout there. I mentioned earlier that this is clearly an adult Pachycephalosaurus. I know this because of the work of John Horner and several others, very recent work, that says that two related genera that we found in Hell Creek Formation at the same time as Pachycephalosaurus might actually be Pachycephalosaurus at different growth stages. We have two creatures, both of which have a better name than Pachycephalosaurus, I might mention, Stigamoloch and Dracorex represent, respectively, a, a sort of teenager and a juvenile of Pachycephalosaurus because what Horner did was, was look at the microscopic structure of the bones and I can't do the study justice here, but suffice to say that when it was very young, it really didn't have a dome. It, it, it had a thickened skull roof, but it developed horns first. And then as it grew older, the, the dome started to develop and the horns were what's called resorbed, which is they, they, they became smaller. If indeed Dracorex and Stigamoloch are what's called ontogenetic growth stages of Pachycephalosaurus, that has implications for what we're thinking about the purpose of this dome. 
Uh, since the 1950s, the, the mainstream theory has been that it was the same as a bighorn sheep or a muskox, where in order to compete for mates, they would ram each other. The, the males would ram each other head on. Recent studies have shown that, one, the domes were probably too fragile to actually sustain that kind of impact, and two, we have cranial lesions in this and related genre that are consistent with sort of raking against one another in, in, in intraspecific combat is what that's called. The other theory, uh, which really does hold up when you consider how flamboyant the other dinosaurs were uh, uh, in this particular habitat, is that the domes were simply for display. Which isn't to say that it couldn't be both. I mentioned earlier that the late Cretaceous was a little unique. This was a time when sea levels, which in the Cretaceous were uncharacteristically high, had been dropping. And we started to see increased volcanism as well. In the millions of years leading up to the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction, life on Earth was being put through the ringer a little bit. So I suppose it's not surprising that these incredibly strange creatures that are the pachycephalosaurids emerge during this time. But it's going to be really exciting if this characteristic constant reclassification and reassessment of how these guys fit into the dinosaur family tree continues. Because at present, we just don't know for sure where they came from. That's all I can really say about Pachycephalosaurus. I hope this was to your liking, sure you can 202. Thank you for watching Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. You could even tell me dinosaurs you'd like me to take apart on the show. You could send me a toy dinosaur. Our address is in the description. Please go to thegeekgroup.org to find out how you can become a member, donate. We are open to the public now. You can, you can come visit us. And we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon. We good? Are we good? Hi. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. No, you're not. I really am. I didn't mean to. <laughs>